Hello, so I found a very practical way of demonstrating why Geiger counters, um, one of the big flaws they have basically, and why ion chambers are better in some regards, um, for, you know, measuring radiation. So what I've got there is the Crookes tube, you've probably seen that before, you know, and I'm going to run this with a step-up transformer, so let's just flick that on, and you should then see, there we go, a lovely purple beam it probably looks quite blue on the camera shooting through. It's even more impressive the light off. So basically the Geiger counters at the moment are both recording background radiation. But what happens when they get brought close to uh, that is something happens that shouldn't happen. So let's bring this one in. The um, GMC 500. and it basically completely overloads. Um, it goes up to 10 Rontgen and then goes basically back round again. Now, it's not actually 10 Rontgen there. Um, as you can see, the number's still crazily high on there. Um, but let me show you the same thing with the Bereg. Once it gets too close, flat lines basically. And it gets even better because it turns out this is a really easy way of demonstrating, like, you know, some of the doomsday counters. So here we go, Polish RS-70 radiation alarm. Um, I won't put the really annoying buzzer on it because you can see the light flash, but if I can just squeeze over that. There we go, it's going off on the 0 0.5 setting. Let's put it all the way up to the 30 Rontgen setting. And if it gets close enough, yep, it's going off. So, what's going on here then? Well, I can demonstrate to you this with a light bulb, interestingly enough. And I, what I'll do first though, just to um, prove that I'm not really flooding everywhere with really dangerous radiation levels, we'll um, use this. This will be a really good example. The CDV uh, 720. So, let me just zero it. Um, and then we will put this on to the most sensitive setting, the one Rontgen scale. Now you're going to get a bit of needle fluctuation with this anyway, because it's a old iron chamber. But hopefully you should be able to see the needle's not really moving on there. If I can get that all in frame. So, this is the problem. What's happening is the Geiger Muller tubes are basically um, fluorescing in a sense. So what I can do to demonstrate this is get a boring old light bulb and I'll flick the room light off and then we'll make the light bulb glow without it being plugged in and this is basically the perfect way of demonstrating one of the flaws with Geiger Muller counters so there we go, there's one of these bulbs I'm just going to go flick the uh, ceiling light off and then we'll resume filming and I'll see if I can get it at an angle where I'm not leaning over awkwardly to try and do it right, I think I'm going to have to lean over awkwardly but if I put this bulb here what should happen? there we go, it comes on so why is this happening then? Um, as far as I'm aware, it's X-rays and sort of electromagnetic radiation exciting the um, sort of filling in the phosphor coating or whatever on these bulbs that um, makes them work. So basically, that's what's happening to your Geiger Muller tube. Um, so it's, that's why these readings are going crazy. You see at that end how bright it is. But interestingly, if I put um, an electromagnetic radiation sort of reader. Um, next to this, um, the reading isn't all that high, and I used a multimeter um, with the probes, you know, on various parts of that tube, and it barely gets a reading on it. So it's not like there's just, you know, these things are going off because they're short circuiting. I mean, they are short circuiting, but you know. But anyway, hopefully that's uh, demonstrated the point, and as always, you know, lovely, lovely purple glow um, from the Crooks tube. Um, you know, these these were amazingly important in the advancement of x-ray technology, you know, and the invention of cathode ray televisions and literally everything like that. Um, but yeah, there you are. So this is the issue of using a Geiger-Muller counter to measure x-rays, basically, is that what ends up happening is the tube just overloads. Well, it actually can do 20 Rontgen, can it? 31 Rontgen? 41 Rontgen, 52 Rontgen, 62 Rontgen, 68 Rontgen, 73 Rontgen, 78 Rontgen, 83 Rontgen, 89 Rontgen, 94 Rontgen, 99 Rontgen. Oh, it can actually go over 100 Rontgen. So I didn't notice this can actually overload quite highly, this um, counter. 
it does have a good overflow thing. But as you can see, the numbers there are going absolutely crazy. They'll actually start going so high you won't be able to see them on the screen. But all that's happening is basically, yeah, the Geiger Muller tube inside is basically just um, probably going to glow in the dark, I assume, if I get that close enough. Don't know if you can see that, but that's basically what's happening is that the actual Geiger Muller tubes are not very um, good at being shielded in a sense from giving false, inaccurately high readings from the decays hitting them. So, from what I understand, it's basically the gas in the Geiger Muller tube is essentially ionising, but not due to the reason it should be. And because Geiger counters work by simply counting, um, not measuring what the actual dose equivalent is of what's hitting them. Uh, you get a really, really scary looking reading there, but as you saw, I've, I've tried this with a few other iron chambers, you know, where I wasn't filming and I could get more close to it. And literally none of them, the needles moved, or they moved so small, you know, it wasn't noticeable, but there you go. So, just a good demonstration of one of the many flaws that Geiger counters have.